Hello guys, welcome to SAS TV. So in this video, we are going to download and install SQL Server and SSMS. The links will be mentioned in the description box, so make sure you check it out. Alright, let's get started. To download SQL Server, you have to visit this particular link. Once you visit, scroll down and you will find two options, Developer and Express. You can choose any of them. The features are almost same comparatively except for few other things. For now, I'm going to select developer. You can of course select express as well. So the exe file got downloaded now. Let me open this. I'm going to click yes here. And wait for it to load. All right, it's getting things ready. We have three options here, basic, custom and download media. I'm going to go with the basic one. If you want, you can go with the custom one. Here is the license terms and privacy statement. If you want, you can go through it but nobody does, right? So let's click on accept. This is the location where the Microsoft SQL Server will get installed. I'm not going to change the location. I'll keep it as it is. This is the minimum space required to get installed. And this is the download size, all right? Let's click on install now. And this will install the package for the developer edition. This is going to take some time. So let's jump into the part where it got installed. All right, that's it. The installation was successful. As you can see here, SQL Server has automatically created an instance named MS SQL Server and here is the connection string for it and all the other details you will need, right? But well, we actually wanted to create our own instance with giving our own name, right? Which we could not do. So let's click on customize now and try creating the instance from our side. All right, the SQL Server setup is open now. Let's wait for it to scan it and then we'll go forward. All right, let's click on next now. Okay, we are good with this. Let's click on next. Well, let's select this one. We are planning to create a new installation of SQL Server 2019. Let's click on next. As you can see here, well, if you remember, I had said it's almost the same thing. If you had installed Express, you'll st still get this option for developer or Express. I'm still going to select developer here. Click on next. Again, I don't want to read the license terms, so I'll click on this checkbox, click on next. Well, we can actually go through all of this and choose accordingly, but let's select all right now. Click on next. This will be the instance root directory by the way. All right, so here is the chance to name the instance. So I'm going to remove this entire thing and say localhost. The change will get affected in here as well. You can see here localhost. I'll click on next. I want this SQL Server instance to be a standalone. So I'll click on next. Click on next here. So these are all the services that are going to get created for this instance. You can change the startup types from manual to automatic and disable. I'm going to keep it the way as it is. Let's click on next. All right, so we have reached the place for authentication right now. We can either go with Windows authentication or we can add SQL authentication. I'm going to select Windows authentication mode right now. Let's check all other things here. And I believe we are almost good. Yep, we are. Well, don't forget, it's throwing an exception, right? You need to add the current user. So make sure you click add current user if you're selecting Windows authentication mode. This will add the current user. Okay, let's click on next. Let's keep the default one for this. Let's also check the data directories. Well, it seems like we need to add the current user here. Well, yeah, that's right. Make sure you click on add current user here. All right, click on next now. All right, so this is going to be the port number for this instance. We are also going to create a new SSL certificate for this instance. Let's click on next now. Let's keep it default, click on next again. I believe it's okay if we don't add the current user here. Let's click on next. Let's keep it default and click on next. Click on accept. All right, click on next again. Let's install Python. So I'll click on accept here. Click on next. And this is the summary for everything we are going to install. Finally, click on install. Let's wait for SQL Server to install the instance we just now wanted to create. So seems like it is going to take some time. Let's jump into the place where it got installed.
Awesome. So the installation of this instance has been successful. And if you see here, these are the list of all the features that has been installed, right? So click on close now. Let's now redirect ourselves to the proper location to see if the instance got created. So I'll go to C, Program Files, SQL Server, and then if you see here, we have two local hosts, right? So it got installed. Awesome. All right. Now that we have successfully installed SQL Server with the proper instance we want to run, the next thing to do is actually to install an application that will help us run the instance. And that is where SSMS or SQL Server Management Studio comes to the rescue. All right. To install SSMS, we can actually click on this button and this will open up the link. You can either do that or you can directly go to that link. I already have mentioned that in the description box and eventually both links will be redirecting to the same link. So let's open up the link. This is the one. All right, waiting for it to load. Once it loads, scroll down and click on this link. So if you notice, it's around 653 MB. So we might need to wait for some time. Let's jump to the portion where it gets downloaded. All right, so the exe file has downloaded now. Let's open up the exe file and install SSMS. Click on yes. So as you can see, the SSMS installation window has popped up. We have to select the proper location. I will keep it as it is, and then we have to click on install. So I'm going to click on install now, and this is going to take some time and load all the packages and eventually install. Okay, so the SSMS is successfully installed. Now, as it says, we have to restart this to complete the setup. Let's do that right now. And again, come back to check if the SQL Server instance can be properly used using SSMS. All right. See you after the restart. We are back after a quick restart. I miss telling you one thing before doing the restart. Please make sure you note down all the information shown in the screen in some sticky note or a notepad and keep it safely. This information might be useful later at some point. As you can see here, I have noted down all the information like instance name, connection string, SQL administrator and the version. I also kept a screenshot of the original SQL Server screen in case it will be needed later. Now that we have kept note of all the details and restarted our system, let's fire up SSMS and check for the instance we have created. To do that, I'll click on start, search SSMS and open up Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. Let's wait for it to open. All right, now let's connect to the SQL Server instances. By default, we have a localhost instance created. Let's connect to it by writing it in the server name and clicking on connect. As you can see, it gets connected to the default instance. But we also had created an instance named as localhost. To connect to that, let's write localhost backward slash localhost. As you can see, it gets connected too. All right, now about a problem you can normally face. Sometimes after you have restarted your system, the instance might not connect at all. Let's show you the problem I'm talking about. Let's search services and open it up. As you see here, it's running right now. But sometimes even after the startup type being automatic, the status might not be running. And if you try to connect to the SQL Server instance at that time, you will see this error. And when you see it, you know what needs to be done. Open up services. Find out the SQL Server service for that instance, right click and click on start. Once it has started, go back again and try to connect. And this time the SSMS will successfully connect you the instance. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please click on the like button. If you want to support us, please click on the subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye. Tell me that you love me, even if it's fake